Good morning, everyone. It's Linda from Linda Z's in Arlington Heights, Illinois. I am thrilled to be able to be here today to show and share with you a quilt technique on flange. I know some of you, I did not say flam. I know that's the French uh, dessert, right, Nick? <laughs> it's definitely a border, but not quite a border. Some people call it a crumb catcher, <laughs> and it's not a crumb cake. I know we're talking about food right now. I'm going to show you a little technique that I think will be fun for you. I might be doing it a little bit different because there are other techniques for doing flange, and it's actually a little piece that kind of pops the border around your quilt. And if you look at this piece that I have here on the table, you can see, if I put my finger under here, you see how it's a little, it's open, it's not a border. If you get much bigger than 3 8 inch, um, this is a bigger one. And the reason that it is, I made it that way so that you could see it on the camera. But normally when I do a flange, I, I do try to make it quite small. Uh, we could do a flange um, binding, and that's a whole nother video, and it's kind of fun too, and we might try that at some point. But this is just to pop your fabric. This um, could be a quilt. You envision it much larger. I like to make them for you to be able to see the um, the, the actual um, quilter table runner. See a thread there, you know, quilter. It cannot stand to see a thread that's popping out. I'll take it out in a minute. But the um, the actual inner part of this, which would be the quilt, is actually on point. And what that means is that those squares, there's, it's a it's four square block, and those um, four squares, it's really great to have a flannel board or some kind of a um, board that you can put them up on or this was small so I could put it down on a cutting table but you really want to um, be able to arrange it when you're doing that you see how the points come up here the points are here and they then this fabric that is next to this um, the print fabric by the way is moda it's for next fall I it was a sampler that I mean the, the fabrics were samples that we are um, probably going to have in our store uh, they're not available yet but you will be seeing them soon and the other fabric, the solid, is Tilda. If you haven't worked with Tilda yet, I had worked with it a little bit, but I hadn't actually done a quilt. I have a couple of them started, but this was fabulous because when you're doing um, a quilt on point, that's where you're turning your corners and then your solids that are gonna go matching that on point have to go alternately every other one. It doesn't look like that here because I've already square, I've already um, cut it off so it looks you know, rectangular. Um, again, if that's something you'd like to see at some point, I might do, um, you know, teach you how to do an on point quilt and we'll do it on a smaller block and then that would be something I think that you could use for um, all your techniques. It's, it's always good to do a smaller one to begin with and do yourself a um, favor by having a block that you can refer to later. So you really have done it and you know how to put the technique together. So I started, like I said, with the Moda print fabric. Then I added the, um, the blocks and these are four, four inch blocks. So with your, um, you know, your quarter, your quarter inch seams, it was four and a half. And then, um, because you know, in either side, and then what I did is um, this piece was all um, pretty much squared off. And if you don't know how to square off a um, quilt, I, I would square it off. Many times people don't square off. And, and what I mean by that is you wanna make sure that it's not tilted in any way that when you've um, cut your fabric that maybe one side is a little bit wider, wider maybe only a eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch. You want to make sure that it's even all the way down and all the way across. And the way to do that, and again, I'm, I'm going to do another whole um, video that will teach you that, but I thought this little ruler here would be a good one. This is uh, Kimberly Imo, who we just had in our store. How many, I would love to hear this in the comments, have ever seen Kimberly? She was in, Aust in Australia for many years. Uh, she and her husband actually just moved back to Colorado He's been in the military, so they've, you know, traveled all over. But she is a huge star in the quilting arena. She's written many books. She has um, 
This is uh, her ruler that um, she used in our seminar this weekend and did pointed stars. She did, uh, I mean, just beautiful things. Uh, used the Janome M17, the M7, the 9450, and the 6700. Can you tell me why she might have used those four models? Think about it. Type it in the comments, and when I get to showing you why, you can uh, let me know if you um, if you know what I why the uh, those models were there, but this was one of the rulers. She had three. It was a gel. It was a jelly roll class, so it showed how to use these jelly rolls. She had a ruler for that. She had a triangular ruler, and then this square. And you could take this and line up your squares. Um, let's see if I can do that here again. This has already been pretty well squared off. I normally do not square my quilts off. And this is pretty much a rule of thumb until I have the backing, the batting, which I have down here. This is not um, by all means done yet, but I am using Quilter's Dream batting, which I love. So many times we have, um, what's the one with all the little, um, the little nubs in it? Um, Teresa, you know, <laughs> what's the other one we wear? <laughs> Teresa's over here saying, what? <laughs> um, the one that everybody uses. They, well, it's one we use in our beginning classes. And it's not that it's le less expensive, but it is a little bit and people don't like to pay it. But this is Quilter's Dream. It's 80-20. And I wish you could feel this. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. And it doesn't have all those little fibers and wood in it because in, um, when you when you use some of these um, battings that are not, you know, they don't take it all out and your needle hits that little piece of wood, it'll deflect. It deflects anyway if you're on a zigzag uh, machine and it's in the center position, but it'll deflect even more if you've got all these little wood things. And there will never be, another, this is my philosophy now, <laughs> I don't know if it's yours or not, but it's really mine. There will never be enough years in my life to be able to do all the quilts I want to do. I That's the wonderful thing about it. I know I'm always going to be striving to get something else done. And so I feel for me, when I am doing a quilt, I want to work with the best quality materials I can possibly get. This uh, backing is actually Tilda. And the, uh, like I said, the uh, batting is the um, the quilt, uh, quilts, uh, dr quilter's dream. So I, I, for personally, when I'm doing them, I always use a really good quality batting and a good quality fabric. That being said, on what I wanted to explain to you, this piece in the center now doesn't have the backing and batting because I was going to put a border on. And quite often a flange goes in between the quilt and the border. So when that happens, you want to be able to um, make sure that this is going to square off. You can square it off with your border and with your, um, you know, your flange. But if you square the, the borders off, and then you, you, it could be that your borders are going to be just slightly off. And then the inside could be too. And that's why I try to make sure the quilt itself, which is the inner part here, that envision this as a quilt, even though I'm using a ta this as a table runner for me, I would put my my top quilt that's already been that's already been pieced. Then I would put my batting, and then I would put my backing on the back. And of course, your backing and batting is going to stick out quite a bit, you know, three four inches at least all the way around the edges of your fabric. And that is when I would go ahead and square my quilt. I'm going to square it again after I put the backing and batting on it, because um, these, this inner part is already really at a good angle. And I get one thing that I could tell you, a little tip that has helped me a lot. This is big enough for, you know, this kind of a piece. And for most, you know, twin size quilts, maybe, depends upon your block size. But I get the biggest, largest square ruler that I can possibly find with the best laser cut. Um, I know we've got um, some of the um, nifty notions or good measure, I think they call them, in the real big squares. We have an omni grid that's got like neon yellow or something like that. We have it in that too. So I'll make sure those are down below on the uh, in the email list, those of you that get our email and those of you who don't we need to be putting that into our uh, YouTube channel so you guys can get it too. 
The other thing that I wanted to um, explain before I get started on this is that I'm going to be pressing my flange um, in, in half before I um, actually attach it to the, um, the uh, border. And the reason that I'm doing that, normally most of you know me by now that I don't do much pressing until my blocks are all finished. Oh, this is not, this quilt is really finished or this table runner. And now I'm going to be putting on the borders. So that inner piece has all been pressed. And now when I go to put the flange on, it really needs to be even because I'm going to sew both the flange and the border. If you look at the back of that, um, or the bottom of that table runner, you will see that I left a piece on there because I want to show you how I'm doing it. And the fabric that I'm using for this border, this is actually a border, is grunge. And if you have not used grunge in the past, I know some of you that are major quilters, you know what I'm talking about. I think we have, well, I don't know how many they make from Moda, but it, practically every one that Moda makes, we have or it is on order. This I love because it had a little bit of that tan color that's in the... Um, the base of the uh, quilt or the table runner. And then it had this little soft orange for a wonderful fall color that I think would look great. I, and I sew this flange on right away with the actual border. I do not, now some people, and especially if you're a beginner, I would take this flange that I've done three sides already and I would baste it on first or sew a, um, you know, sew it with a quarter inch seam onto the edge before you put on your table, your uh, border. I don't need to do that. And if you pin correctly, this is one place where I really do use pins. I'm gotten so <clears throat> lazy, maybe. <laughs> I don't know if you want to call it that, but I love the clips. I use it on so many of my quilts. But when I am doing uh, this particular thing, because I'm trying to edge this in and make sure that it goes in right. So let me show you how I do the pressing before I actually start doing the sewing. You've probably seen these lines on the ironing board and they're really nice to give you a, you know, a, a really good um, concept of how you put these two edges together because this is not correct. If you can see it like this, see, there's an edge showing. You want these to be in, Many times what I do is I like the pressing. I like the the uh, fold towards me. I just get used to that on most of my pieces. And then I'm going to make sure that those two pieces are right together. I don't use steam on this, although because I am using a Laura Star, I am going to press this iron first. And you know the reason that I do that, because if there's any water in that cord, it will now come out. I mean, it won't come out on my fabric, which is really important. So you can see I'm just holding the pieces as I go along. And this little line on the, um, the ironing board is just really nice for that. And you can see, again, I'm not stretching it. You're gonna go up and down. You don't wanna stretch this or you will have a little bit of trouble when you go to match your border. And of course, what I do when I straighten my, um, fabric, um, I made sure that I took a ruler and I measured both down the center and on either side of the quilt to make sure that the, um, the borders were exactly the same, the flange and the borders would be the exact same amount. Now I have that flange pressed and I wanna check it on both sides. And quite frankly, if you don't have it even, just kind of with your fingers, push it back again like this a little bit and re-press it because you really do want to get, if I can stress anything about flange, see why I, I normally do this with the curve first because you won't get that rough, that rippling on your, um, on your fabric if you um, have the, the, um, the fold towards you. All right, so let me get that in there. We're all ready to go to the machine. So, you know, Nick, would it be easier for them to see this when I attach it? Maybe it would. I'm going to go grab my <clears throat> piece here. Now, this is the border. I've measured the exact size. You don't just take a piece of fabric and start at one end and then cut it till it matches the other end. 
You want to make sure it's the exact same size as your other border. This is a border, this is flange. If you get more than about three eighths of an inch of um, flange, then you really want to do a border. You don't want to do a flange. I mean, you could, there's no right or wrong to it, but it's just a kind of a rule of thumb that the flange is usually a smaller little piece that pops the color of the quilt or the border. So now what we're going to do is take this and I like to take my border and make a little crease. That'll give you an idea or put a pin in it. The same way with my flange and take a little crease. And you know what I'm doing, of course, I'm just checking to make sure where that um, center of my fabric is. And then I'm going to pin these together and I'll go over here to my piece. I'm going to have to grab that table runner and I think I'll bring it back to the ironing board because I, I really want you to see it up close. I have some really nice pins that I use and let me grab those too. I think that's a good way for you to see. Um, I won't use my, I have that wonderful little magnetic, um, but these are magnetic too. I don't know if you've ever seen this, they're kind of fun. <laughs> I was having fun with them the other day and they kind of match my table runner. So it's kind of fun to do. The, um, if you notice on the, the one that I've done already, you can see I the uh, flange goes on the bottom or the inside. The um, border goes on the top, and then the um, the quilt piece that we're attaching it to goes here. Again, let me explain. If you didn't want to have the um, here's that little thread that's driving me crazy. <laughs> if you did not want to do this all the way across, you could have. I could definitely have done. I, I like to do the sides first and then the top and bottom last. We, I could have done this and here and then attached the borders. I could have done the whole thing with the flange and then attached the borders. I was doing this um, the quicker way. <laughs> so then, of course, this is, and I think it looks nice. I think it's just kind of a fun way to, to um, again, pop the color. So again, you can see as I do this, always... Let's make sure we also have, I've done all the measuring already, so I know that this is even, and you want to measure your borders to make sure they're even. And then, again, you could put a, a pin, or you could just do a little press so that you know that your flange is going to go on right. And I'll put it right here. Go ahead and match up all of those. And you want to start in the center so that you really do have them accurate. I want to make sure that all three of those layers, well, there's actually four because the flange is folded in half, that are even. Now you see how even that is? It doesn't come up over the seam. And then the same thing with here. You want to go to this. I will tell you that if I had a real long quilt, what I do is I pin that flange first like this. I know this seems like a little bit more work, but it just absolutely keeps the accuracy in it. Then what I do is I go back and I bring this border over to the end and I repin and I make sure that it is totally accurate so that those edges are going to be perfect. And then I'll continue pinning all the way around and then I'll go to the machine and I'll show you what we do from there. All right, now this is um, pinned with my little orange pins. <laughs> and I want to show you something about this machine that I think is really um, cool. Some of you may have it on some of your machines. And I asked you earlier, did have an M17, a Janome, or an M7, 9450, or a 6700? And do you see an answer by anybody in the comments down there? <laughs> uh, the reason would be because they have an, they all have an HP plate. Now that means, and you can see, I'm going to put that onto this machine. The plate that I have on here right now is a zigzag plate, and I really don't want that on here because this HP plate, I don't know if they can see that up close. 
Is that a good place for me to show it or maybe this way? Okay. There you can see that, um, see that little, that little hole there? And see there's nothing else here. It's just in the left side. This needle, well watch what happens when I do this. First of all, this is locked right now. So I'm gonna touch the needle plate and did you see what came up? The needle plate just very easily came up and that is the zigzag plate. There's another plate that comes with this machine too that has a left, a right, and a center. And we're not gonna use that today. But if you look at the bobbin that is in here, in fact, I'm gonna take that out because I'll show you how to put it in. Those of you that do have a um, Janome, I think it'll be fun for you to see exactly how it goes. And I'm gonna just take this plate, put it back on, and you can see it just snaps right in there. What is so great about the machine is that it, on the screen over here, it says, please make sure the proper presser foot is attached. Well, I have put the straight stitch needle um, plate on, so we don't want a zigzag foot on, or of course it, it won't, it actually won't sew unless it has the right one. So I do have the right foot on. I put an H put P foot on, and you can see what happened immediately. That needle went right over to the left position. And that's why when I'm talking about why this is such a great, um, you know, needle plate and, and foot is because this high performance plate and foot are sewing on the left edge of the, the, um, of the machine. And think about it, your bobbin thread that's underneath there, when I was had that open, you could see it. That bobbin thread comes up on the left on all machines. So now that stitch is also stitching a straight stitch along the left. When I do this stitching now, I am going to go ahead and put my foot and my um, my fabric right under in here. I'll do it slowly. I do have a knee lift lever on here, but I'll go ahead and put that on. Again, see how smart this is? It's locked. So now it's turned off for me. I do have the HP on. It's, it's automatically on the screen putting this on the left side, the left position for me. And that is the best possible stitch that you could have when you are doing a quilting stitch. It's gonna be the most accurate stitch. And let me put this back in here again because we're not gonna go anywhere <laughs> unless we do this. I told you I would show you, those of you that have this machine, those of you that don't, I'm sure you have something equivalent that will work for you. You can see that it goes on like a P. You see how the thread is coming off here on the left-hand side? I'm sure many of you that have top-loading uh, machines know that this is similar to what yours is. I put it in here, I kind of hold it, and then it goes under this little hook. That's real important that that goes there. I try to hold it with my finger, not my stylist. I'm doing that so you can see it. But I try to do it with my finger and then it goes around this little cutting gauge. And that's it, very simple. You know, when I first, it took me a long time to ever, uh, cause I've been doing this for many, many years, to really believe that a top loading um, system would work and it, does work. The stitch quality on this machine, and you can kind of see the, um, if I put it here or maybe over here, the stitch quality on this is absolutely phenomenal. And again, that's on a top loading machine, but again, this HP plate and the HP foot, there is a little hole in the left hand side. I'm not going, the needle is not going there. It is right exactly where the uh, middle and then the edge of the foot is going to go right along the edge of the fabric. I want to show you something else that I do that I think is very important, whether it's this machine or whatever one you're using, is I will always make sure that my needle is in the down position when I start. This does have a knee lift lever and usually that's what I use. I'm going to move this, um, but I want to, I'm going to do it um, by uh, hand so that you can see right, right here. Now, do you see what I'm doing? I'm pushing that fabric right up to the needle. So it's gonna start right in front of the needle. And of course, I'm gonna get rid of this pin. The other thing that I want you to notice, I do have a red tip 
uh, needle in from Janome because that is the recommended needle size that they use. It's actually a 14 and it works absolutely beautiful. That's why I'm getting this gorgeous um, stitch. And now all I'm going to do is sew along the edge. You have um, um, motor speed here. I'll go a little bit slower so that you can see what I'm doing. You can see how beautiful that starts at the beginning. And I'm not holding it at all. I'm going to make it a little bit faster. It's very hard for me to slow sew this slow. <laughs> Those of you that are faster sewers know what I'm talking about. You want to go up to your next pin and of course get rid of that and watch right along the edge here that your flange is just coming up to the edge. You can just barely see it. It doesn't go over the edge and you're just going to go a little bit faster. <laughs> And you know that um, if you are um, trying to ease your fabric in, the best way to do that, there, if there's more fabric on the bottom, which there is a little, slightly little bit more here on the bottom, that's why I'm sewing on the top because the bottom will be easier to um, ease in. You can see as I'm coming down, I'm holding that. Now I'll go right off. Cut that, and voila! I like to get my pins all out, and you can see now we are ready for pressing. We're going to go over to the board, the pressing board, and we are going to press all the way along here first. I turn it over, I press again, then I open it up, I press the flange down. You can see why it's called a crumb catcher, the fabric you know, there, this is not sewn down. That's the difference between a border. It's only sewn on one edge and it's got a folded edge on the uh, inside. Once I press that nice and evenly, I'm going to take it to my cutting board. I'm going to put my batting and my backing and then I'm going to square it up. Hopefully this has given you some good techniques. Um, I'll kind of hold this up so you can kind of see on point. Let's see if I can move it over this way a little. <laughs> I have to go the opposite way. <laughs> there you go. And you can see how fun it is to do. The um, instruction books for Janome just came in. I thought I'd mention them. Um, you can print your own off like so many of us do, but this was just such a great idea. And I think we gave them a really good price on it with the um, with the um, they're spiral bound and they're all done. So um, let me know if this is helpful for you, if there's something else. There's many other techniques that are available for this, but I thought this was really a simple one, easy for you to follow and might pop some of your quilts. So enjoy and I hope to see you next week.